Have you ever wondered how a simple piece of metal becomes a life-saving tool in the hands of a surgeon? From delicate scalpels to robust bone saws, surgical instruments have evolved over centuries, but their journey from raw material to precision tool is nothing short of remarkable. Today, we'll explore the fascinating process behind the creation of surgical instruments, where craftsmanship meets science, and precision isn't just preferred, it's vital right here on History of Simple Things. Let's take a quick step back. Surgical tools are not a modern invention. Thousands of years ago, ancient civilizations like the Egyptians and Greeks used rudimentary instruments made from bronze or obsidian. Some of these early tools were surprisingly sophisticated. Forceps, scalpels, and even early versions of surgical scissors. But it wasn't until the rise of modern medicine and sterile technique in the 19th and 20th centuries that instrument design and manufacturing began to demand the level of precision we see today. Every surgical instrument begins with a decision. What material should it be made from? Stainless steel is the most common answer, but not just any stainless steel. It must be a specific medical grade alloy that resists corrosion, can handle high heat sterilization and remains durable under stress. For certain instruments, materials like titanium or tungsten carbide are used, especially when weight, strength, or anti-magnetic properties are crucial. These metals don't arrive in the workshop as perfect instruments. They start off as rods, sheets, or blocks, raw and unformed. The transformation from that raw state into a precision tool requires both machines and highly skilled hands. The first real step in crafting a surgical tool is forging. In a high heat environment, metals are heated until malleable and then hammered or pressed into rough shapes. For some instruments, such as forceps or clamps, this involves forming two identical halves that will later be joined. For a scalpel blade, the forging process focuses more on creating a blank that can later be sharpened and honed. CNC machines, short for computer numerical control, often play a role here. These advanced machines are programmed to cut and shape metal with microscopic precision. They allow manufacturers to produce intricate designs consistently which is essential for tools that may need to grasp something as fine as a single nerve. Once forged, the tools enter a grinding phase. Here, edges are defined, surfaces are smoothed, and most importantly, blades are sharpened. Grinding isn't just about making something sharp, it's about making it predictably sharp, at just the right angle and consistency. A scalpel blade, for instance, needs to be sharp enough to cut effortlessly, but not so fragile that it snaps. After grinding, instruments go through a rigorous polishing process. This isn't just for looks, though many surgical tools do have a mirror-like finish. A smooth surface is less likely to harbor bacteria, making it easier to sterilize. Depending on the type of instrument, it might be given a satin finish to reduce glare in operating rooms or a high-gloss polish for cosmetic surgical tools. Instruments with moving parts, like scissors, clamps, and needle holders, require careful assembly. Two forged halves are matched together, sometimes with a pivot screw or joint that must be aligned with perfect balance. Even the tiniest misalignment can result in failure during surgery. Each tool is then calibrated. That might sound a bit scientific for a pair of scissors, but in surgery, the stakes are high. Scissors must close with exact pressure. Clamps should lock firmly without damaging tissue. Calibration ensures that tools not only work, but work precisely every single time. Next comes heat treatment, a crucial stage where instruments are exposed to controlled high temperatures and then cooled rapidly. This process, called tempering, 
strengthens the metal, enhancing durability and flexibility. It helps instruments resist breaking or bending under pressure. Hardness tests are often done after heat treatment. Manufacturers use tools like Rockwell testers to make sure the instrument is tough enough to handle repeated use without degrading. Although surgical stainless steel is resistant to rust, it's not immune. That's why passivation is so important. In this chemical process, instruments are immersed in a nitric acid or citric acid solution to remove any free iron from the surface. What's left behind is a layer of chromium oxide, a natural invisible shield that helps the tool resist rust and corrosion. Once approved, the tools are cleaned ultrasonically, packaged in sterile environments, and labeled for traceability. Each tool has a batch number or unique code, allowing hospitals to track its manufacturing history in case of any recalls or issues down the line. Today, innovation continues to reshape the way surgical instruments are made. 3D printing, for example, is opening new doors, especially for prototypes or customized tools. Imagine a surgeon designing a specific tool for a unique operation, then having it printed and sterilized within days. We're not far from that being the norm. Even coatings are evolving. Some modern tools are coated with antimicrobial layers or non-stick surfaces that repel blood and tissue, improving both the safety and efficiency of surgeries. Despite all the technology involved, one thing remains consistent, the importance of skilled workers. In factories across the world, especially in places like Tuttlingen, Germany, a city known as the world capital of surgical instruments, Craftspeople still hand inspect, hand polish, and sometimes hand assemble these tools. Their attention to detail is what makes the difference between an average tool and a life-saving one. The next time you see a surgical tool in a hospital drama, or you're preparing for surgery yourself, remember the journey behind that instrument. From a block of steel to a precision blade, it's the result of centuries of knowledge, modern engineering, and the dedication of countless individuals. It's not just a tool, it's a silent partner in saving lives. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.